Hello everyone, thank you again to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the JMA seasonal model for today's first video. Uh, we're going three months ahead with the JMA seasonal model and uh, we'll see what it's forecasting in terms of not only the 500 mm height anomaly for March, April and May, spring 2020, but also um, we'll have a look and see what it's showing in terms of temperature precipitation anomaly uh, and that sort of thing. This, of course, ahead of the second and final spring 2020 season model roundup that's going to be released on Saturday. That'll be the first video up on Saturday morning. We'll get something like 13 long range models together. It will include the JMA as well. And we'll see what all of those models are showing. Now, the JMA can get a lot of information from this model. Um on a month-by-month -month basis. And, of course, we don't have time to do that when we've got sort of 13 models to go through. So we always like to isolate this one, take it out, and have a look at it in its own terms. And uh, that's what we're going to do uh, for this video. We're going to drill down and have a look at the detail. But we just won't have time to do with the uh, final spring 2020 season model. Of course, on Sunday, Gauss spring forecast is going to be released. So um, that should be quite an interesting watch and view, I would have thought. Uh, very good on that, though, just to say that second video update coming up later on this afternoon will be the regular week to 10 day vid, and uh, that will include all of the usual features as well. Right, so we're going to start off with the JMA 500 millibar height anomaly for March 2020 from the North Pole view down. So this, of course, is the North Pole of the Arctic just here. We've got the wider Arctic around there, and then, of course, got the mid latitudes through there. Red, orange and yellow extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. Blue to below average heights, which is low pressure. So for March, the JMA is forecasting a large ridge of above average heights to get going. That's something I haven't seen for a very long time. But there we go. The JMA is forecasting high pressure to take over during uh, March. And the jet stream is pushed northwards. That looks like a very, very nice start to the spring. You'll expect a lot of dry weather with that. And temperatures probably quite warm as well actually although i suppose nights could be a little bit cold but overall anti-cyclonic dry and fine uh for march big big change what we've had through this winter that's april uh 2020's 500 millibar height anomaly again we've got the below average heights out to the northwest uh above average heights extending in from the atlantic into much of northern europe it looks like there should be a lot of dry weather on offer here jet stream should still be going northwards the heights maybe not quite as intensely strong in april as they are in march but nevertheless it looks like it should be uh, a mostly anti-cyclonic month and then we go through to May. So this is three months out. It's the farthest out that we go. And obviously this has uh, a big health warning with it. But uh, we're seeing an area of above average heights then centering just to the west of the UK and Ireland. There's no particularly evident trough of low pressure. But you will probably get a trough of low pressure extending through here somewhere. And this leaves us with a jet stream doing something maybe a little bit like that. Uh, so it could be a trough in the 500 millibar flow across Scandinavia and just to our east. Um, and so therefore, I mean, it's still quite an anti-cyclonic signal, so probably a reasonable amount of dry weather. The only difference for May is that uh, we might be getting a bit more influence from a jet stream. That we might be on the edge of that trough within the 500 millibar flow. And uh, it could be a bit cooler as well. The air could be coming in from the northwest. So out of the three months, May is the one that has a bit of a question mark about it. It could be a little bit more unsettled. But in May, um, it doesn't look overly unsettled, I have to say. Uh, right, so this is a tropical and mid-latitude view. The British Isles in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it on this view. is just there. Uh, so we're back to March. Reminder of the 500 millibar height anomaly for March. We're under a big ridge of high pressure. High pressure dominating in March. We can't see Greenland, Iceland and Scandinavia, but we know that low pressure and the jet stream is off up there somewhere. Uh, so the temperature anomaly for March 2020 with the uh, JMA is being forecast to be above average. We're having a milder than average month, if this is right. Temperature anomaly is around 0 to 2 degrees uh, above average. So yes, quite a mild month coming up. And because we're under a ridge of high pressure, we also have a dry month forecast as well. The JMA is forecasting our first drier than average month for a very, very long time. I can't remember when the last time was that we had a drier than average month, probably going back 
into uh, maybe into the middle of the summer, back to July, or before that, probably you have to go back to the spring. But anyway, a drier and milder, warmer than average month being forecast by the JMA model for March. The reason is that we're under high pressure, and this, this means that the mean wind direction, which sure it's a bit, bit of a job to make out these black arrows, but the mean wind direction is sort of southeasterly. Uh, doing something a bit like that. So there is a bit of a southerly influence to the uh, jet stream and to the air. And so therefore we finish up getting uh, a mild but also dry month under an area of high pressure. That's April. And again, we've got the above average heights so extending in from the Azores. From the Azores high into the UK and off into northern parts of Europe as well. Up here and also up there. Still below pressure painted in around Greenland and Iceland. Jet stream doing something a bit like that. So the temperature anomaly during April, it's not as mild as it is in uh, March, but still above average overall, still a milder than average month being forecast. A little bit more unsettled for the north and west. So we did see that the heights are a little bit weaker in April compared to March. We're still more or less dominated by high pressure, I think. But so there's a bit more influence out to the northwest of the jet stream. So just a little bit more of a southwesterly flow. Could be some cloud rain into northwest at times. But overall, still, for England and Wales, a dry of an average month forecast. The wind direction, uh, again, for April is sort of southwesterly. See the black arrows are going from that direction. That's from the southwest. So... A mild, um, maybe slightly more showery month, particularly for northwestern parts of the country, but overall not too bad. And then we have May, uh, month number three, it has the above average heights just out to our west then. We can't see Scandinavia, but it looks like there's probably a trough elongating through there with a the jet stream, perhaps doing something a little bit like that, placing us just on the periphery of, uh, of a bit of a dip within the 500 millibar flow. Temperature anomalies for May are still slightly above average, at least a mild of an average spring being forecast by the JMA. Precipitation anomalies overall not too bad, so still uh, for many of us a little bit drier than average. For Scotland it does seem to be a bit wetter than average, so it's just on the periphery of that dip within the 500 millibar flow. The mean wind direction... Uh, during the month of uh, May. So to the southeast, we've got kind of easterlies coming in to the south of us. To the east, as we come over here, you can see we've got north westerlies to northerlies just on the periphery. So again, it's quite a complicated pattern that we've got for May. Um, and I think out of the three months, although it doesn't particularly show it, I think out of the three months, May is the one that could be rather cooler and to me rather more unsettled if we do get that. Uh, trough within the 500 millibar flow getting going, then uh, May could be one that's a little bit uh, more unsettled and a little bit cooler uh, as well. But overall, it's not too bad that this spring there's a lot of high pressure on offer, and after such a horrendously wet winter, it looks like we get a dry March if this is right. And of course, that's month number one, so that's the most reliable part of the whole thing. Hopefully, and then if it gets more unreliable, the further out we go. So, with a bit of luck, we're going to have a drier um, March, potentially a much drier March, quite spring-like as well. A nice start to spring 2020, if the JMA is right. On Saturday, you'll see how all of the other long-range models are looking. The JMA will form part of that um, seasonal model roundup, but you'll see how this compares to all of the other long-range models, and that'll be the first video up on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Of course, on Sunday, we've got the uh, guys of his spring forecast being released. Come back later on. We'll have a look at weather next week to 10 days. But for this video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.